So this is kind of crazy. Laid back Luke. I man, in college, he used to be one of my favorite DJs and producers ever. I still obviously really respect the guy. He's like a true talent and he's one of the pioneers, I feel like, in just like EDM in general and mainstream EDM. Anyways, he on his YouTube channel posted a response to my DJ video. And so I saw this and I was like, oh my God, first of all, I'm like honored. Second of all, I really hope, I hope he doesn't say anything too negative. I haven't seen this yet. But I thought it'd be fun for me to watch this and then maybe give, you know, a little like post-mortem, I guess, on the DJ video because I've learned a lot since then. Obviously, since that video, I've been DJing. Uh, I've done like, you know, a handful of gigs, most of which in Vegas. Next one is September 1st, by the way, at Encore Beach Club. But uh, anyways, I've learned a lot. I've obviously, I've been producing a lot of house music as well. So I thought it'd be fun to watch what he says and then maybe give my thoughts on it. So let's get into it. Hey, what's up? This is Laidback Luke, DJ and producer. And I've actually been dying, dying to see this video. He's been dying to see this video. That's pretty cool, man. It's weird. Like if you told me back in college, like, <laughs> dude, you're gonna make a video about DJing and laid back Luke is gonna say that he was dying to watch it. I would be like, what the fuck? But if you also told me I was, I'd be opening for Dylan Francis, I would also say like, you know, get the, get the fuck out of here. You are drunk, my man. <laughs> Give me your keys. You're not driving home. That's what I would have said. So let us dive into the video and you'll see my response. Paris Hilton, Shaq, Brody Jenner. That's right, disc jockeys. All three of them. They all decided it doesn't matter what I did before, professionally. Now, I'm a DJ. I'm a DJ now. And then they just are a DJ. Okay, okay. To be fair, that's where it starts, right? But here's a couple of facts. There is a sort of love for dance music. And I don't know much about Brody Jenner, but I do know that Shaq started DJing in 1998. So it's always been there for him. And I know that Paris Hilton really, really loves EDM or dance music. But it is interesting, right? How, how does that evolve from here? So this is one of the things that I will say I got wrong about the video. I didn't do enough research into Shaq's history with music and with DJing. He's been doing it for a long time. A lot of people really respect him. I used him as an example of someone that did something else and then just transitioned to DJing, but I didn't know that he'd been, he's been doing it for a long time and he has a lot of history in the music scene. So I, that was kind of a fuck up on my part. But yes, I guess it does just start with a love of EDM music, which I've been listening to EDM for fucking ever. So I have that too. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So I, but I do, I like it too. I like it. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So I think like the way to do it is just to kind of jump in the deep end and just like book a show. And then I could just basically do an hour long like house set. Now, if you've been- Cody Ko with his millions of subscribers would actually stand a chance because what it's actually about and I'm not sure if we're gonna see it in, in the rest of the video is how many people you can pull in using your name, right? And Cody being the big YouTuber that he is not necessarily being known as a DJ could pull in a lot of people to see him. So that's that's one factor that could help. I guess uh, one of the main pieces of criticism from budding DJs, producers, people in the music scene gave me on this video was, was that they were like, oh, it's not that easy for us to get gigs. Obviously, if you're someone that has a name, you can just book a gig. I think that was part of what I was trying to prove. And I think that also it kind of minimizes the work that I have. I didn't just, you know, I've been grind. I've been, I have been like kind of grinding for fucking a decade trying to build my name up. Obviously not in the DJing scene, but elsewhere I have put in a lot of, a lot of work to get to the point that I'm at today, which is why I can do something like this. But I do understand the criticism of a budding DJ who's like putting in you know, just trying to get booked and doing sets at random bars and parties and whatever, trying to build their name up, that they would be pissed that I could just call someone up and book a gig because I haven't been grinding in the same way they have. When I do something like this, I don't just try to, I practice a lot and I also am producing a shit ton. And I've also had a history with music, with Tiny Me Gang and stuff for the last six years. So it's not like I'm completely like foreign to, to this world. And I do say I will, res I will try as, hard as I can to respect the process, you know, because I know like that's what it takes to actually get good. There's no cheating. There's no shortcut shortcuts. There might be a shortcut to booking a gig, but it's not going to go well if you don't practice and respect the actual art form. Good. Good. 2,500 bucks. I mean, it's a ton of money, but it's an investment. <laughs> oh man, that is 
crazy from no gear to gear and then spending that type of money. Woo. Other mainstream DJs have their own music that they play. I don't have any house songs. I need a house song. Let me get something straight here. Real DJing was never about playing your own productions or being able to play your own productions. Real DJ is being able to adapt to a crowd, monitor the crowd, and not even with your own productions, being able to get a crowd going with just the song selection you have. So let me let me straighten that out a little bit. I know you see all the main stage DJs playing their own tracks and whatnot. In classical DJing, this doesn't even matter. What matters is you're able to adapt to a crowd and bring a crowd to a higher level so all of them can leave the night thinking, oh, this was the best night of my life with amazing music. Yeah, that's a good point. That is a really good point. I feel like maybe, I'm, I'm curious to see if he would think this, but that that is changed a little bit with the way technology has evolved, but also like social media and stuff. It's like everyone hears the same songs, like at a wider scale than ever before, right? On TikTok or whatever, a song will pop off and then everyone wants to hear it, so everyone plays it. So I feel like now that's why like, people's own productions are a little bit more prioritized now, I guess, because it does make you stand out as being unique because you have something that you could play that potentially no one else has. But it's also like in this day of age where everyone is trying to be someone that also kind of makes you stand out. Like people will go see you because you produce something because it's just like more accessible to be a DJ or a stand-up or any sort of art form. It's like you can start posting clips and you can get traction like right away. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying it's easier than it was in the past. The idea for a chorus would be like, drink a little bit, smoke a little bit, but not too much because bro, I'm staying healthy. And then whatever the drop is. That's kind of my idea right now. I'm cringing at myself. Ugh. That in front of a crowd of people would be so funny. People would be like, hey, yeah. That, that is cool though. Trying to Play your own song, visualizing that. <laughs> yeah, that sounds really good, actually. <laughs> yes! 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 That's awesome! Not too much, because I gotta stay healthy. Not too much, because I gotta stay healthy. Hey, I need this song. I like it. <laughs> God, that's awesome. Luke. Hit me up on Instagram. I'll send you the extended mix. Gladly. Gladly. Cody, you gotta do some vocals for me. What the fuck? Yes! Literally, whenever. I'll just do some right now. Um, ah, uh, fuck, what's something cool I could say right now? Pressure's on. Um, got a big, uh, bowl. Got a big bowl. A really big spoon. <laughs> About to eat some soup. There you go. Let's make a song called Soup. There is a plethora of buttons on this thing. So he buys this really expensive piece of gear to then probably arrive at the club seeing that the gear they have is different. Pioneer gear, obviously. The flagship setup is gonna be totally different from that. So I'll be curious to see that because he'll probably practice on this and it's like, oh, and then all the knobs are different, right? By the way, a lot of people, like I've noticed in the comments of this, people were saying like, he bought that, the controller, but then later on in the video, he's practicing on CDJs. It's because Dylan had CDJs in his trunk and when he came over to teach me, he wanted to do something specific on the controller. Like I think it was try to get the waveforms to to show up in color like they do in record box or something like that and he couldn't figure out the setting so he was like real quick my cdjs are just in the car right now i could just set them up right here and we can practice on those because that's what the club is gonna have and i was like yeah that sounds way better why did i just spend 2500 bucks on this fucking thing if we're just gonna practice but anyways now the, this is set up over here and it's actually what i practice on but that's why that happened wow a dj looking right like a real dj or this it's just you just so <laughs> this guy's so nice this guy's so nice. Like he had the chance to make fun of me like nine times. Already I'm making fun of myself and he's like, you do look like a DJ actually. You should do some vocals for me. And I fucking love that. He's a, just a nice guy. He's laid back. Got it. Give me some notes for what you say into the mic. The kind of things that you should say to the crowd. I'm the worst person to ask for that. Okay. I'm the worst person to ask for that. If you think you need to be speaking in the mic while DJing or DJing main stages, don't. If you don't want to speak on the mic, please, do not speak. 
I am one DJ that does not speak in the mic ever because I'm not good at it. My voice doesn't sound good. I don't like hearing my voice over sets or anything. If you're not comfortable with the mic, then just don't do mics. <laughs> okay, so I will say that's actually very interesting to hear him say that because I will say like at the show that I did in this video, I was taking the mic and trying to say cheeky things because I was like, maybe that'll set me apart a little bit. Like, you know, I like to try to be funny, so maybe I could say some funny things into the mic. But when I play in Vegas, I cannot get myself to to sound funny or cool on the mic. I said some dumb shit last time, and I said it like I was nervous. So I was like, who here is excited for Dylan later? And I said it like that, and like no one, they were kind of like, what the fuck did you say? Like no one really heard it. So it was really awkward because I, I wanted people to cheer and just no one did. Finding the confidence to say something in the mic that's not like one, two, three, because like that's fine. But saying something else is, is hard. I get nervous. Now that I had the gear, the coaching, the flyer, the gig, all that was left was for me to build a set, practice, and then just be very nervous. Going for a walk, just listening to music. This is the second time he mentions building a set and Honestly, I don't like the whole concept of building a set. What you would want to do is bring at least 50 tracks with you. The week before the show starts, you start DJing every night, recording your set for an hour long. And you listen out, you just freestyle. Listen out to the songs that fit together and just do it, you know, off of the top of your head. Pick one song, mix another and etc. The next morning, listen to your own set and listen what mistakes you have made and which combinations worked and which not. The next night, you do the same thing. Play for an hour, pick random tracks, and then the next morning, listen to it again. I promise you by the end of the week, you'll be so well versed in all those 50 tracks, you are able to freestyle in the club. That's actually what I've been doing. What, that's crazy. That's like, that's cool to hear that because that's actually what I do. Because I'm curious to see how this goes because building a set, you never know what you will run into prior. There's so many factors that can change which can make your built set. By the way, this is like very educational for me right now. Um, this, is, this is half of the reason I'm watching this is to get like some good good tidbits. So I, get a, I guess I could have just watched it privately, but I wanted to watch it with you. It completely different than you expected. I would recommend being able to freestyle through your tracks and being able to adapt on the fly, on the moment, and give the crowd on the moment what they need. Dude, see, this is one of the things I've realized is like, I'm, this is, I'm resonating with this because sometimes I'll plan to play a song, but then it's like not the right vibe. And you can tell when you're playing, you're like, oh man, people are way, they're responding better to this type. So like, maybe I should stick to something more hype or like more laid back or whatever. <laughs> laid back. <laughs> but yes, I've noticed that. And sometimes you can plan. You can't get planned. You can't. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. Woo! Nerves are normal, right? So Nerves are normal. Cool venue. I'm freaking the f out. Your thoughts and feelings. I feel like I. This like feels a lot bigger than it actually is for some reason. Yeah. I'm not mean, having like 30 people over at the place and are all like, whoa, first set, man. And then we arrive there and it's f***ing packed. Hey, that's good news. Yeah. That's good news. That's what you want. I'm getting nervous watching this. <laughs> I know how I know what happens, and I get I'm getting nervous. Play some music. <laughs> yeah, what am I doing? This is why you don't talk into the mic right here. I'm trying to be funny. Uh, what what is it? This isn't stand up, dude. You know, I thought this was gonna be a something where people are uh, dancing. Shut up. Play some fucking music. Ah, I can't even watch this. I'm just cringing. There was people just standing, like just staring, like just packed up against the front, just staring at me. I mean, this happens. That's okay. Better be good. As long as I could get from the first song to the second song, that would give me the calm. Yeah, it kind of feels like that. I must say, even even at my level, having done the parties that I've done, all I care about on the moment is going from the one song to the other song and even thinking three, four songs ahead thinking, where are we going right now? That's the constant question. What is it that the crowd wants right now? So I can feel that, and it's very true. The middle of the set, it was going pretty well, but I couldn't really tell, you know, people were really enjoying it, so I, I thought of Dylan's advice. Cody, Cody, listen to me. You're doing fine. Just play Buy You a Drink by T-Pain. You'll get the crowd back. Buy you a drink. <laughs> 
And of course, it worked wonders. Okay, well, let me respond to that. Sometimes you get to like a dead point in your set. You've given it your all, you're like a, on a high energy level. And then at a certain point, for some unknown reason, still unbeknownst to me, the energy just stays flat. And then it is actually good to change genre, to throw them a curveball, to do something completely different, just to break the ice and for you to get back into the swing of things. Dylan's advice was proper and you know it shows as well. The crowd responded to that, reacted to that. And so these things actually work if you're in the right setting. Hmm. I guess it makes sense that if the energy, like that's the reason why it works is because it's a curveball, and it's different from what you were already playing. That moment I learned the most important part of DJing, taking people's B-reels in the front row. That seems to be the thing that everyone cares about the most. And now finally to <laughs> answer the question. That was a joke. Is DJing easy? Sort of, that's right, that's the answer. As far as artistry, <laughs> it's like, you know, like I feel like sometimes when I make these sort of videos, you, ha I have this sort of naivete that I'm able to lean on a lot to give me the confidence to make a statement like that and to make a video like this. But then I learn more about what it takes, it's been almost a year, and I've learned so much already about like the industry and what it takes to succeed. And, and obviously, like anything, nothing is as easy or as hard or as good or as bad as it seems. And that's the case here is like, I will say it is hard. It's hard to be a good DJ. Is there something else you can practice for like seven hours and then perform professionally? Probably not. I don't think anyone's gonna see a clarinet show after seven hours of practice. So if you wanna make it hard, that limit is pretty high, you know? Then again, there are some DJs where they just press play. There are some mixes where everything is pre-mixed and they just go up there and press play. That happens. There are videos of people just straight up pretending to twist the knobs and shit like that. So that could be it with some of these people. <laughs> Doesn't really seem like Shaq does anything up there. Oh no, Shaq is legit. Shout out Shaq. I know, shout out Shaq. Sorry. I, I just, I'm sorry for saying that, even still. And I do agree with him. DJing is as hard as you want to make it, but, but learning the basics and learning the intricate skill of watching the crowd, having a huge library of tracks you can pick from, releasing a track every month or every six weeks. It's fun. I can't complain. This has been my career for decades now, but it is a career. And it is hard work. And yeah, so I, I actually do in the end agree with him. Is it hard? Sorta. Can anyone do it? Sorta. Some some people are hacking it at the top. But overall, I gotta give a shout out for Cody Coat for making a video like this, for promoting DJing like this. Shout out to Dylan Francis as well for participating in this. It's just fun to watch. Amazing. This is really cool, man. Like, I'm just like smiling because I'm just like, I never made this video with the thought that anyone that's actually a professional would watch it and be like, oh, I agree. You know, it's cool. It's fucking cool. Anyways, I love this guy. That was fucking awesome. Thank you to Luke for for watching my video and enjoying it. That was really cool. Very surreal, honestly, because I am a big fan. So thank you. And, uh, and I will do vocals for you anytime. We'll make that song about eating soup. I mean, I do, I do like soup. Oh my god, a hot bowl of soup in a club too? Fucking middle of the dance floor, just trying to eat soup, getting bumped, you know, soup spilling over the side of the... Stop. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. Motherfuckers can't even eat soup anymore at a show. <laughs> this is world coming to, you know? That's what the song would be about. Anyways, that was really cool. I'm sorry, Shaq. I'm sorry. I love you. Oh.